fruit um, derived from plants and um, even bark from trees and um, different different natural um, items. And so you can use them for different things like we're doing here, we're diffusing it. So this little doodad here behind us, it actually is um, emitting like a vapor and the essential oils are coming through that. Um, and it, you know, the natural benefits from it can be anything from healing, um, uplifting, you're, you're energizing, calming. Um, it does all kinds of different natural things. And then, so we're gonna be talking about some different kind of oils today, um, different ways to use them, uh, the benefits of different oils. And um, Lisa is an expert when it comes to essential oils. So she'll be helping us uh, learn a little bit about uh, different essential oils. She also has a book here um, the essential oils, all natural remedies and recipes for your mind, body, and home. So, all right. Any other input before we start? No, I don't think so. <laughs> Let's just get started. Okay. <laughs> all right. So for everyone that is joining us, we appreciate you guys today. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And we're going to go, oops moving things around. All right, and I am gonna go ahead and go back to the beginning of our slide. All right, so hopefully everybody can see my screen um, and be sure to let me know. Yep, perfect, okay, and do I sound okay? Thank you, ma'am. All right, and let's go ahead and get started. Yeah, it does smell really good. Um, so before we start, we do have a little bit of a disclaimer um, because essential oils may not be good for everybody to use. Um, and also, if you have certain medical conditions, you may not want to use essential oils. Um, it could be anything from skin irritation um, or, you know, if you have like an open cut or anything like that, you don't want to use essential oils on any of that. And also, we are going to talk about ingestible um, essential oils, which they do have. But obviously, you want to make sure that you never ingest um, essential oils unless they're specifically stated for ingestible use. So just be sure that you remember that as we go through this. All right. Um, so what are essential oils? Um, it's an aromatic, volatile substance found within a plant. Um, it's extracted from a particular part of the plant, like the flower, leaf, resin, bark, root, branch, seed, or fruit. So you can get them from all different kinds of places. Um, so within the oils, there's hundreds of organic constituents that promote beneficial responses when, when applied or inhaled. So those are like the two main ways that you're going to reap the benefits of essential oils, it's either applying them or inhaling them through diffuse, diffusion. That'd be the correct word. <laughs> Jump in anytime, you're the expert. <laughs> It's like we're on a talk show today, and I'm like, and here with me today, I've got Lisa Moore, essential oil expert, here to answer all your questions. <laughs> um, so where do they come from? Uh, they're sourced from all over the world, actually. Um, they're not limited to any certain areas or um, ecosystems. They're basically plant extracts. Um, they're made by steaming or pressing various parts of plants to capture the compounds that produce fragrance. Um, it can take several pounds of a plant to produce a single bottle of essential oil. Um, now that would probably depend on what type of a plant it is or what type of a source you're getting the oil from. Um, it's just like anything really, it depends on how it's made up, um, how much of the material you're actually gonna get. It's one of the reasons why it can be, some essential oils can be so expensive because of all the time and as much product that needs to make a small bottle. Yeah, so we have a bottle that's, uh, oh my gosh, my eyes. Uh, it's 10 milliliters. So it's a tiny, tiny little bottle of, um, of oils. And like this one, uh, it's an aromatherapy blend and this is one fluid ounce. So really you don't get much. So where do you buy most of your oils? I get a lot of mine online, and there's a specific um, company, it's called Deterra, but there are all types of them. You can get them in the grocery store, at the drugstore, 
but those aren't always the ones that are like approved for ingestion or they're just not as good of a blend or process of the oil being made. So like um, you might find oils at like a, um, like a Marshall's or anything like that. Would those be good ones to use? Or? Those are, those could be a little better. It just, yeah. It, uh, like if you go to a health food store and they have them, those are better oils. But there, and then there's the different companies that sell them too individually so that they, they know exactly what part of Africa their like certain plant comes from. So it's, it's, it depends on where it comes from too. And they're more knowledgeable where it's from. Very good. All right, so how are essential oils produced? So the first way um, is steam distillation and the majority of essential oils that you see are made this way. Um, it's introduced into a distillation chamber. Sorry, I gotta move my screen out of the way here so I can read the rest of it. Uh, it's introduced into a distillation chamber containing the plant material. Um, the steam then breaks down the plant, causing it to release its oil in a vaporized form. Uh, and then it is, oh, sorry. Um, and then it's piped into a condenser. Um, the vaporized essences, along with the steam and other substances, pass into a pipe through condensers, um, and the vapors return to liquid form and are separated from the water where they are captured as essential plant oil. So that's the, that's the major way that most of them um, are produced. Um, number two is a solvent extraction. Um, now this one, as I was reading, it seemed like it was a little bit, um, it was a little less um, popular because it seemed like it took a lot more work, but um, it's used when the odorous properties of delicate flowers and plants uh, material would be altered or destroyed by steam or water distillation, or when a plant, uh, for instance, rose or jasmine contains very little oil, making steam or water distillation impractical. Um, and a lot of this process, it talked about um, like introducing a solvent to the actual plant to break it down and draw out the oil. So it just seemed a lot more um, kind of um, in depth, I guess. <laughs> Um, number three is expression or cold press, um, also known as a cold press or also known as, a, as expression, is a mechanical method of pressing citrus peels such as lime, lemon, bergamot, which is one of my favorites, it smells so good, um, orange and grapefruit to remove the essential oils. Um, this method uses pressure to physically squeeze the oil from the plant tissue. This method is practical for citrus because of the unique oil bearing structure of citrus fruit rind. So that actually makes sense at, when I think about it. Like it does. when you're squeezing like lemons or mm -hmm. oranges, how I use lemons at home all the time. So when I'm squeezing them, your hands always pick up that scent even if you're just touching the rind. Yeah, you think of you're holding the rind of the, the citrus fruit compared to a rose. You know, you're gonna get more out of the citrus fruit than you are the rose petal. So in two, people use orange and lime and lemon peels in drinks. Mm -hmm. So like if you're a bartender, you would take like your orange peel for a Manhattan and you light it on fire and rub it around the rim of the drink and that kind of draws out like the oils and yeah. the flavors. The things you learn. <laughs> All right, so um, next up, we wanted to kind of talk about some of the different ways to use oils. Um, and as we mentioned, one of our oils that we have here, uh, we're using our diffuser. So that'll be the second option that we talk about. Um, first is inhalation and then topical. So those are the, diff the three main ways that you're gonna actually um, use your oils and get the benefits from them. Um, so first uh, is inhalation. Um, so here's Lisa. Hopefully you guys can see. She's just, um, she just opened the bottle <laughs> and she's kind of passing it back and forth under her nose. So this right. one is that one's Jasmine. Jasmine. Here, I'll still put them this on. one's good. Mm -hmm. So what do I, I'm going to. You gonna... can just dip it on there or like do it on a, um, a cotton ball. Oh, maybe. Okay. 
it's coming out. Oh. See, I told you she's the professional, guys. <laughs> Try and shake it a little bit. It's coming down. Smell the thank you. So it's gonna. Oh, there we go. So it, it she put it on the hanky. It also says on my uh, on my display there that you can put it on a cotton ball, and you can then smell the cotton ball as well. So. Um, either of those different ways um, that you can saturate with the oil. Um, but yeah, just already just smelling it, you can get a lot from it. Mm -hmm. um, so with each inhalation of an aroma, thousands of olfactory nerves in the nose, um, draw, they send signals to the brain, which that is the way that you actually process or your body processes using the oil is the smell goes to your brain and then like if it's one that's gonna wake you up, it's gonna send that you know, energy. Mm -hmm. I'm not a scientist. <laughs> yeah, but just <laughs> works for me. So, um, and then the next one is diffusion. Um, and that's what we're doing here. We have our little um, oil diffuser and, uh, and I have one similar to this at home and I know Lisa does too. Um, and so what it is, is it's, and it's an electric um, diffuser. And so there's a little chamber in there that you fill up with a certain amount of water, which you don't want to use too much or too little. So you fill it up to a certain level. And then how many drops do you usually put in? You can do a combination. If you do like just one cent, maybe four or five. Okay. So, and we're going to talk about oil blends later on in the, in the, um, in the slideshow, but um, so like for this one, if we wanted to use jasmine, we'd put some drops of jasmine in there. And what would the jasmine do for us? Jasmine is uh, just, uh, that's just the, like the floral. It's just a feel good. Oh. It just helps make you kind of like, ah, that's like how you feel when you walk into a floral shop. Okay. You know, it just, it's, it smells good and it just makes you happy. And what do we have in here now? That is a little of lemongrass and some orange. And you can actually, um, with diffusers, you can set them to come on intermittently. Mm -hmm. So it'll, I don't know how many settings it has. I don't know on this one. But it, it'll come on, like it'll, it'll stay on for so long and then it shuts back off. So like you could turn this on. Um, sometimes like when I would go to bed, say I was having trouble sleeping, you could put some lavender in this and then turn it on next to your bedside. Um, and the other neat thing, uh, and I'd have to shut the lights off to show you, but it lights up. And so it's got really pretty colors that just kind of goes along with, um, yeah, so there you can kind of change it. And it goes along with the scent coming out and then the color changing is very calming as well. Um, but also too, I know Lisa uses it hers a lot. Like if you have a common cold, um, say you've got a stuffy nose or your chest is feeling like it's congested, or you have a cough even, there's different blends to use for that. So right. if you had those symptoms, what would you put in your diffuser? I would, and I've done it and it works, is a, a mixture of eucalyptus, which is like a menthol -y sort of smell. And there is a blend that's made by the oil company that I use that's called Breathe. And it's just another one that has a mixture of eucalyptus and a tea tree oil that like kind of helps your nose get unstuffed but i do it all, all the time all the time and the reason that i got into this was my granddaughter who's now eight she was a colicky baby and did not like to take naps and her mother needed a break in the <laughs> afternoon <laughs> so she would like rub her with a sort of a lotion that had lavender in it and it worked so she tried um lavender in a diffuser and she would plug it in during a nap time and that helped tessa to calm down and she slept for a while in the afternoon so for those of you that maybe um, are tuning in maybe you're having trouble sleeping at night um lavender might be something that you could um, put a couple drops on your pillowcase um and this one is a spray yeah this one, uh, you could get things like this all over the place. That's from Bath and Body. Bath and Body Works, which probably most of us are familiar with. So you just would spray this on your pillow or mm -hmm. even on your blankets, mm -hmm. um, and then it would help you sleep. Obviously, we, we mentioned in the beginning the disclaimer. Um, you might want to like test a small patch, um, you know, to like on your skin or 
to make sure that you're not going to have any allergic right. reactions. So same thing if you're spraying it or if you're just putting a few drops, but, um, but most often it should be, you, know, you, sh you shouldn't have any trouble with it, hopefully. Mm -hmm. um, and then as we move on, the next method is, um, uh, we talked about the diffusion. Uh, one thing I didn't mention about diffusion, it extends the aroma um, and it includes the use of vaporizers, diffusers, which we have here as a diffuser, right? Or is that a vaporizer? That's a diffuser. Okay. Um, there's candle lamps, which we're going to talk about those, um, not using them in our buildings, <laughs> um, air fresheners, room sprays, mists, and more. And one thing we probably want to mention um, for anybody in our, in our communities who are turning, tuning in, uh, if you have pets, sometimes they say that diffusing essential oils can sometimes have adverse, pets can have adverse reactions to mm -hmm. them. So, um, so just keep that in mind if you have an apartment where you have pets. Um, I've never had any trouble with mine. I know I did, Lisa's yeah. never had any trouble, but I have heard stories of people's pets having adverse reactions to essential oils. So just keep that in mind if you have a dog or a cat or any other animal, really. Um, so last way to use oil that's popular is topical. Um, and so can all of the oils we have here, can those all be used topically? Yes, you have to mix them. And what do you call well, this? This is a coconut oil and it's a fractionated. So you have to use that because this is very, it's highly concentrated anything in the, the little jar or the little bottles. So you just mix that and we actually made a, a perfume here before where we used it where we just mix some of the coconut oil with um, several drops of the, the essential, essential oil and that then you can like rub onto your hands for a massage, you can put it like when you make soap, that sort of thing. So it's, but because they're so highly concentrated, you have to really be careful with them. And so this is, co so does it have any scent? No. And that's because you're adding the oil mm -hmm. to it. Hmm. So you would add your oil, your essential oils to this and then put them in like a... Yeah, we put them in a, like a little bottle or even in, if you have like just cream and you want to add something to a, a like a unscented lotion, you can do that. I with never that. thought about that. I mm -hmm. use a lot of unscented lotions which sometimes your doctors recommend unscented because they're not as harsh for your skin. And then you could add your essential oils to those. Ah. Um, so as it says here on, on the screen, many topical applications for essential oils, including massage oils, face creams, body moisturizers, lotions, foot scrubs, body mist, and more. And we'll come back to the foot scrub uh, because we have some more information about where to apply topical essential oils. Um, and as Lisa mentioned, they're highly concentrated um, so that that's why you have to have them mixed with something if you're going to put them on your skin. Um, so just make sure that they're mixed with either something like a coconut oil mm -hmm. or a lotion. You just, you never want to put this directly on your skin. All right. Um, and so there are tons of different uses um, for um, essential oils, there's 150 different types of oils used in aromatherapy. Um, each has a unique chemistry, so they're all made differently, and it, it's all because of what they're made out of. Um, they produce therapeutic, psychological, and, let me move my screen, um, psychological and physiological effects. Um, they have anti-inflammatory, pain relieving, decongesting, and antiseptic um, uses. Um, as we mentioned, tons of different ways to use them and then many beneficial combinations, which we'll talk about the combinations and how to use those as well. All right, so first up, we've got lavender. That's probably one of the most popular, do you think? I think so, yeah. Um, I actually am growing fresh lavender um, at my house for the first time ever and just touching the leaves of it and then smelling it oftentimes when I sit outside on my deck at nighttime, um, I love to just, because I have it right by a chair, and so I like to just kind of touch some of the leaves and then smell, and it has that really strong lavender smell, and it's so calming. But lavender is good for calming, balance, relaxation, um, and again, it can be used in lotions, massage oils, and bath products. I actually read, if you have fresh lavender, 
you can actually cut sprigs off of it when it's ready and actually put it in hot water of a bath mm -hmm. and it can be calming even that way. Or you could put it like in your apartment, you could put some in your shower and the hot water, when it hits it, that hot steam would activate the oils. Yes. So yeah. I learned that. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the one that's most popular in use with um, baby products is the lavender because of the calming. It's like our, the sleep one is a lavender mm -hmm. chamomile mix. And lavender tea, lavender tea mm -hmm. is a is a calming tea like to drink before bed. So very good. Any other lavender info? No, that's those okay. are the things that. Um, and citrus. Oh, I think we have a, a few different types of citrus on here, but the first one is orange, um, and you can diffuse it to relax and stay focused. So one thing I think of when I use it is like if you're at work would be a good time to diffuse orange, which we have in here, right? Mm -hmm. So it would help you relax if you're in a stressful environment and then stay focused if you have a lot going on. Um, it's also an antidepressant. Um, it can help decrease inflammation and pain. Um, and you can also use it in household cleaners because a, a lot of companies now are going to more essential oil products, air fresheners, mm -hmm. um, countertop cleaners, I mean, all of those different ones are going to these citrus um, uses. Next up are lemon. Um, lemon oil, it said, could fight fevers. Do you know anything about that? Just, the, just that it does, like, yeah. because with the immune system. I didn't realize that. Mm -hmm. um, as she mentioned, it can boost your immune system, which we all could use right now, so keep that in mind. Um, it can help clear your respiratory passages, and again, it can be used in household cleaners. Um, one of the things actually that I do, and you wouldn't have this problem, but I love to cook fish at home. And when you're cooking fish at home, you know, sometimes the bad parts is that you smell like it afterwards. Um, so actually what I learned, I think I read it somewhere. When I do anything with fish at home, I take lemon because, you know, lemon's good with fish, but I'll take lemon and I actually squeeze it and like rub it mm. into my hands and it helps get rid of that smell. And then you can also rub fresh lemon on your wood cutting boards to mm -hmm. neutralize any type of like bad smells. So and look how often we put lemon in glasses of water. Most of the time when you go to the restaurant, you they bring you a water and they often put a lemon in it. Mm -hmm. So that helps too with like the orange with the, um, like an anti-inflammatory. And think about that. So that's another, yeah, it's another good use. Also people say like, um, one of the things that we do sometimes in our memory cares is like the lemon water or the lemon like hand towels mm -hmm. and stuff to kind of actually like boost your appetite. So I know as we age, one of the things we do is we lose our appetite. So lemon essential oil in your kitchen, do you think mm -hmm. would be a good? Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind as well, guys. All right. Next up is rose. Um, so you can actually use rose oil. Um, it eases muscle tightness a natural astringent um, for clear skin and it reduces scars or wrinkles. So I feel like at beauty supply stores, a lot of times now you're seeing oh, rose, rose, rose mm -hmm. hip oil. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the hip part is. Rose hip. It's part of the flower. Oh. But I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't know I'm either. not fond of that scent. So, no? no? Oh, I like, I like that smell. Um, I have it in there. And you told me earlier to use that for something. Headache. A headache. So I woke up this morning with a terrible headache. So Lisa uh, mentioned that I should use peppermint oil. And um, it can clean respiratory passages. It decreases indigestion and nausea. And then it fights headache pain. So I, I didn't get around to doing it no, yet, sure. uh, but I could have rubbed a little bit of the peppermint essential oil on my temples, uh, or you said on the back of the neck mm -hmm. to help um, to ease any type of headache that you might have. So yes, I I'm sh I take her word for it, and I think <laughs> I've probably tried it before. Yeah, yeah, I have this, and this is actually a um, oil that's that's got the coconut in it, and it is in a roller ball. And this is one like for a headache, since peppermint is with, uh, helps fight headaches. You would just roll it like right here on your temple, on the temples, and then across the back of your neck. 
and that actually helps with the headache pain. And it does, because I get a lot of the tension headaches, so I roll it in the back. Because she yeah. has to work with me. So. <laughs> and then another thing with it, peppermint is one that you can put like in water or actually ingest it. And think too, like when you've had an upset stomach, um, Pepto-Bismol has a bit of peppermint in it. And then just the little red and white peppermint candies, hard tacks that we all know and suck on are also for um, like nausea and when your stomach's upset. Yeah, very good. My headache's gone. <laughs> I will have to try some. Oops, sorry, I went back too far, guys. Um, and so, oh, hold on, way too far. Um, okay, oh, and the other thing I want to mention about peppermint oil um, is you can actually, it's a deterrent for some pests that I've read. Um, mm -hmm. My sister actually used peppermint oil around her house to, um, and my sister's a clean freak, but she had a mouse that was uh, in her house. And one of the things she read was to use peppermint oil um, and you could just put drops around your house, um, around areas that you know that they might get in. And the peppermint oil is supposed to deter them. Um, and also you can plant peppermint in your garden or in your flower beds around your house to actually help deter um, mice from coming in. So hopefully you don't ever have that problem, but that's one thing you can use it for. Um, tea tree oil is our next one, and I've always had a hard time saying that, but I've used tea tree oil for a lot of my life. And one of the things I remember using it most for was for greasy hair and pimples. Yeah. Um, my mom, when we were growing up, she would always make sure that we had tea tree oil in our bathroom because we would dab it on a pimple when we would get well, a look really- Look how long ago that was mm -hmm. before essential oils got popular. I feel like tea tree oil that was one of yes. the first ones that yes. I've ever really used. Um, and then I would mix it with my shampoo to help get rid of like an oily scalp. Also, um, one of the things that I read uh, was that it can actually kill lice. So there's been, like, they use it for treatment of lice. Have you ever heard that before? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's also used for an antifungal, um, an antiseptic, and it heals wounds. So all around, we don't have any of that, do we? It's, um, and it smells, it's a, got a very, very strong smell. Um, and I think Paul Mitchell actually makes a tea tree oil um, shampoo and conditioner. Um, yeah, and I used to, yeah, I used to use it, but it has such a strong scent that it actually, um, and a strong properties that it actually can do like a tingly kind of feeling. Um, but it worked wonders. Like I said, if I had like a zit um, on my face, you know, us as women and men too, we hate zits. So I would just take a cotton ball and just dab it on my face. Um, and it really did help decrease oh, the redness. And They put it in soap yeah. for like teenagers with acne. Yeah, it's, it's a big thing nowadays. And it's good to put on, like it said, heals wounds that you can put some on a, like if you have a cut and the scab's starting to dry, that's good for that too. All right, next up, and I think this is your mom's, one of your mom's favorites mm -hmm. is eucalyptus. Mm -hmm. um, it kills respiratory passages. Um, and maybe I was wrong about the tea tree oil with the lice because I have it on, well, either way, eucalyptus yeah. also said that it's one that will mm -hmm. kill lice. Um, and it eases muscle and joint pain as well. So, anyway. Well, think of that when you use Vicks Vapor Rub mm. way back, that has eucalyptus in it and the menthol and BioFreeze, any of those things for arthritis that we use like to rub has that scent in it. So that's the eucalyptus working in those like topical ointments that doctors yeah, tell you to use. <laughs> yeah. so. Yeah, so you could mix a little bit of um, eucalyptus and you could mix it with an oil like this and you could even use it for like a massage. Mm -hmm. um, like say you go to, uh, to an exercise class and you have sore legs afterwards, you could do um, a little bit of your coconut oil, drop a couple drops of eucalyptus and you could massage your legs, your feet. Um, so any of that would really be beneficial for you guys. Shoulders, everybody I seem like at Kent Ridge has short <laughs> shoulders, or if I do an exercise class, it's the first thing that everybody says, oh, you're killing my shoulders. So you guys could do your own little massages. Um, next up is rosemary. Um, rosemary is good for boosting your mental activity, which would be good for anybody of various ages, um, and especially in seniors. 
um, because you guys know we're forgetful, you know, I forget things. And uh, so that would be very good as well. Um, it's calming and it gives good stress relief and it's also an antiseptic. So anything else about rosemary? We use it in cooking. Ah, so yes. That's definitely one that's ingestible. Rosemary and thyme is a good combination. I didn't think about that. All right, so different types of diffusers. Um, we kind of already talked about um, the one that we have here, uh, which is the last one on the page. That's an electric diffuser, and it uses water. Um, and the nice thing about that is that it exposes, the oils can be exposed to the air, but it doesn't use heat. Um, and it's added to small amounts of water, which we mentioned. And then there's actually a tiny little fan. Is it like up at the top here? I think it's of? in the bottom. In the there. bottom. Mm -hmm. And it actually blows the, um, the water vapor into the air and that's how the oil is diffused and that's how you would get the benefits. Um, so the first one on the page here uh, is a candle, um, like a heat diffuser. And as I put in the description, we cannot use these in any of our buildings. Um, because we don't wanna, don't wanna be using candles, that's a no-no. But I wanted to mention it um, as it is a popular way to use oils. Um, it's, it's, you basically put the candle in there and it heats the oil and that's how the, the oils are actually dispersed into the air. Um, it's not always all op optimal, it said, for therapeutic uses as the heat can change the properties in the oil. So that method might be more of just getting that good smell. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the, the one in the middle is uh, the diffuser sticks, and those would be fantastic for people who live in uh, senior living communities like ours. Um, you basically would buy the reeds um, and put them in a jar, um, and you could, and I think they sell a lot of sets like that that already have right. the scents, and you would just put the reeds in there, and basically the reeds kind of pull the scent through their, their sticks, and then it come, it's diffused mm -hmm. into the air. So those would be a great option for somebody uh, living in an apartment, as we mentioned. So, and it said that better, that the diffuser sticks are better for lighter scents as they travel up the sticks a lot better. Um, and then some of the uses, we talked about ingestible oils. Um, not all oils are ingestible. Um, and Lisa was telling me that there's ways to know whether or not they're ingestible. And first you wanna look for brands that have the supplement info on them. So just like when you're buying food in the grocery store, you wanna to look to see if they have a calorie um, count and you know the different nutritional facts because that's gonna tell you that they're able to be ingested. So like the ones that, that Lisa has here, this is uh, our, our set is by Laguna Moon. Um, none of these are ingestible, right. correct? Mm -hmm. So. Um, it actually says on here, do not ingest oil, avoid contact with eyes and other sensitive areas. So the ones we have here would not be proper use for ingesting. Um, but there are some that do, that are popular. And some of those are lemon, peppermint, and ginger. Um, one time I was here working and I had a stomach ache and Lisa got out her, what kind was it? It's called Digest Zen, but it's a, it's a blend but it had um, peppermint and ginger in it yeah. and anise. And I put some in water to drink it. Um, it was a digestible kind. Put it in water to drink it and the, the taste was a little bit awful, but <laughs> it did help with my stomach ache. So, um, uh, so that is one. And as I mentioned, it can be added to water. And then Lisa said you can actually purchase, like when you take your medicine and they come in capsule form, you can basically buy the same mm -hmm. thing, but they're empty and they don't have any taste, they still will. Um, you can put the oils in it and then swallow it and then it will act just as if you put it under your tongue or in the water. So the capsule would break down just like if you mm -hmm. take regular medicine and then mm -hmm. those would you know, absorb into your bloodstream or, mm -hmm. oh, okay. And help. Mm -hmm. um, so ingesting them is not quite as fast acting as those applied topically. So they work much faster if you would use like an oil or um, a lotion. Um, and again, little disclaimer, make sure you consult your doctor before you use any type of oil or you ingest any type of oil. Um, so just keep that in mind as you don't want to, um, you don't want to use something that's going to harm you. Um, and then topical oils, um, you always want to make sure you do a small patch test um, to make sure that you don't have any adverse reactions. 
So, you know, do like a little uh, dab, a little tiny drop into some lotion and put it on your skin. And if you don't notice anything, then I would continue to use it. Um, and as Lisa mentioned earlier, where to put them. So where are the good places to put them? Well, uh, for like I said with the headache when I did it, I used the roller ball and did it here on my temples in the back of my neck. And that really helps with headaches. You can put them like on your wrist. And that's just like if you would do, say like the orange, you want something uplifting or just to, you know, kind of put yourself in a good mood or... One of the ones that would help with calming, a good place is on your wrist. Um, the stomach ailments, if it would be, I use a lot with the roller balls. So the ones that have the little bottle that's already got the oil in it with the roller ball on it. This one is past tense and this is a tension blend. So this one, it's a strong one. You could put it like on the back of your neck, but it's really good to put around your belly button on your stomach. That's so right. that's a good one. And the absolute best place for any oils is right on the bottom of your feet. So even if it is like, you can put it on the bottom of your feet for a headache because your feet have like all like with reflexology, like if you push a certain point, like say under your big toe, well, that would be like, that might help with your liver or something. There's like all pressure points on the bottom of your feet that help with the other parts of your body. So since your foot is part of the biggest organ of your body, that it absorbs into your feet and goes very quickly through your system. So the actual best place is on the bottom of your feet. And which when she said that to me, and she said it's a part of the largest organ, which is our skin, um, that's the best way to get those oils to the place, the problem areas, mm -hmm. really. I was very surprised when she said mm -hmm. that. I thought, the feet, why is that the best? <laughs> so very good. Any other spots that you really, those are probably the main yeah. ones. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, let me move myself out of the way here. Um, so we talked about oil blends, um, like the sleep therapy one, it had lavender and chamomile. Um, and then she had said with her roller balls, um, some of them had different types of oils in them, not just one. So those would be an oil blend. Um, and they're really just good for getting multiple benefits out of one oil. Um, so putting them together, it's, you're going to be able to, you know, have better mixtures that you're going to be able to get more from. Um, but mainly it's really about creating pleasing and uplifting scents. Um, when we did an activity here at Kent Ridge with essential oils, um, we had a whole list of different, different oils and we had, um, like what they were good for and like different combinations that you could use. And I think like, like you mentioned, what's one that you wouldn't want to do? You never want to mix like different kinds of groups. Yeah, you wouldn't put like pine or sandalwood with a floral mm. you know you want to kind of keep the same family so pine any like the woodsy scents to keep those together the floral you can mix like lavender with lemon because that's a nice scent and it's relaxing and it's kind of a mixture of both so it kind of helps you kind of even out you know lavender kind of relaxes but the lemon kind of uplifts you a little bit, but it comes to a point where it's like evening out. So you're more calm and relaxed in an even keel sort of way. Um, and so like she mentioned, some of the citrus blends, you could do peppermint and orange. Um, it's a good uplifting scent. Lemon, lime, and orange. Um, we mentioned that it's good for summertime diffusing. Um, it's uplifting and it's energizing. That would be one I would think for using in the morning. I have um, the, a combination of lemon, lime, and orange in a spray bottle, and it's got a little of the coconut oil. And I turn my shower on in the morning, and I just kind of spray it in there. And with the hot water from the shower, it emits the scent. And it's just kind of like wakes you up and gets you like ready to go, <laughs> motivates. Isn't grapefruit another citrus one yes. that you can use for yeah. uplifting? Um, and then we mentioned the woodsy scents. So these might be more for the man smells, um, but women, we like these ones too. I like really warm, comforting scents. Um, sandalwood, patchouli. I think patchouli is a little bit strong for it some is, people. Yeah. Um, and then pine. Um, also, we mentioned bergamot. Would that be one of the woodsy ones? Mm -hmm. um, and bergamot's a tea, actually, oh, that is really, really good. 
Um, and it's very calming, but it's more so about what set pre scent preference you have. Um, and then we talked about the floral scents. Like Lisa mentioned, she doesn't like rose. I, I do like rose if it's not too strong. Um, and then lavender because they just smell really good. They're just very calming and um, just really good smells. I have a friend that has a, a consignment shop and she is really into the oils and she will mix the peppermint and the orange and have that in her shop while people are in there shopping because it's uplifting and she swears by it and says that that helps her business as far as people purchasing because they're just in a good mood and they'll spend money that way. <laughs> so every time I walk in there, it's like, mm, it smells good. But she uses peppermint and orange together. So if you go into a store and you smell peppermint <laughs> and orange, walk out if you don't want to spend a lot of money. <laughs> oh, that's, and that's smart because people use different things like that, like in restaurants and everything too. They have those tactics that they mm -hmm. use to to help their business. So that's a smart woman. All right, I think that's our last, uh, our last slide. So um, was there anything else that we wanted to share about aromatherapy? I don't think so, I think we covered it. Covered most of it. Um, I don't know if anybody on here that's, that's listening in, if you guys have any experience with essential oils, um, or maybe if you have a favorite, um, or if you just have used them in the past and you, you know, not necessarily believe in them, but maybe you had um, good luck with them or um, anything like that. If you guys want to uh, jump in, share those experiences with us. We have a quiet group today, Kayla. Quiet earlier too. Um, which we have a few I said they were quiet earlier too, but we do have a few different people on here. Um, but with my experience, um, I just recently, my um, sister-in-law sells, I don't even know which company necessarily, Young Living, is that one? Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, anyway, she made me a bug spray because like the over, like the counter or like the normal bug spray, like off, it doesn't work for me or my daughter. Like if you were to look at my legs, um, my legs look like mosquito like I don't ever try to like not let them bite me and but I literally have every kind of bug spray in my counter or in it's my crazy. and they just like it doesn't matter like it doesn't matter time of day either like most of the time they don't bite when it's like super hot nope they they do me and hmm. um and like through my clothes just everything and I was at this like barbecue and this one lady, she wasn't my sister-in-law, um, this one lady, she's like, have you ever tried like an essential oil blend? Because literally I was the only one at that party, me and my daughter were getting bit. Um, it's, I've read it's our blood type. Like we have like this really rare, like- That's what you say. Blood yeah. type. And, um, so and like, they just like bite me like crazy. And, oh um, Anyway, so she like took me to her car and I, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I put this on and I did not, the rest of the evening, I did not get a single bite on me or my daughter. And I was like, oh my gosh, like, I think I found it. And so that was the most successful. And so my sister-in-law made me their version of it. Um, what, what is it? What was the blend again? Oh, I don't even know. It's in this brown yeah. glass bottle. Yeah. That. Well, those are the best kind. When you have them in the dark bottles, that's that will keep it. If you have them in white bottles or clear glass, that's not good. But brown bottles, good. Yeah, and so that's that's the thing that has helped me the most, probably. I, I was just looking at um, some of the natural repellents, um, and lemon eucalyptus oil. Um, has been used since the 1940s. It's one of the better blends for um, for a natural repellent. So, well, it's, it's um, it works for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm a believer. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I'm also one that gets horribly bitten up by mosquitoes. Um, I mean, I get bit like even where my clothes cover. You think that you aren't going to get bit, and they still bite you. And Lisa, on the other hand, she doesn't get bit. They don't like her blood, I guess. So, <laughs> so my, maybe it's because she uses essential oils regularly. It could be, <laughs> honestly. Um, 
and that's like with your daughter, like you said, that's smart too, because like she's, she's young. So the more I think that we can go without using like, um, you know, heavy, uh, like DEET, cause that's really the DEET that's in bug spray. You're not really supposed to use like really high levels of it. So especially with your daughter, that's really good for her because it's, it's safer and healthier. So good job. <laughs> um, yeah, my sister is one that uses essential oils quite often. Um, she really loves them and, um, she uses them for all different kinds of things, but um, I mean, you can, you find them in the stores now in, in so many different products. I mean, pet products have them, um, which as I mentioned, diffusing them can sometimes be, have an adverse re um, reaction. But um, actually I just purchased something. It should be at home when I get there today, fingers crossed. Um, I have a 10 year old dog who is horribly anxious um, and they actually have a product for dogs and it's a, it's either comes in a collar form or it actually comes in like a plug-in diffuser. And it's um, the natural pheromones mm -hmm. that mom dogs produce that actually is like a calming effect on puppies and yeah. dogs. And it can be used to um, help with anxiety, um, moving to a new home, um, outside distractions, or even when you have a new dog in the family, which my two-year-old dog is not new to my 10-year-old dog, but that might have contributed to her anxiety. So anyways, long story short, we're trying uh, one of the collars and it's activated by her body heat and it releases the natural pheromones and hopefully, please say your prayers guys, <laughs> that it will calm her down. Um, and then the plug-in just plugs into the wall, just like a, an air freshener plug-in. Yeah. It has a tiny little jar on it and it releases that also into the air in our home. So... I'm hoping. So they have that sort of form of, a, it's not really an essential oil, but it's sort of like a yeah. natural mm -hmm. essence that, um, that they would have with their mothers when they're, when they're born. So used it on baby girl on her belly. Ugh. I'd have to rub it on her belly. Well, fingers crossed guys, because, because my dog is terrorizing our home <laughs> with her anxiety. So, um, but any other, um, thoughts or, um, uh, uses for essential oils before we are finished? No? Quiet groups. That's okay. Um, if you guys have any other questions about essential oils or uh, maybe you're interested in something that we talked about today, um, a lot of the stuff can be ordered off of Amazon or um, you can find like the doTERRA brand. Do they have like a website and stuff? Mm -hmm. So um, if you guys are interested in any of that, just let us know and uh, we can give you more information or different ways to use it um, that are safe. So, Kayla, anything else before, we, uh, before we're out of time? Nope, I don't think so. It was very, I love to sit and listen to it. It was very educational, very helpful. I, I use it every, it. I use it every night, especially in the, like when the weather's colder, you know, because like in the summer, if we don't have the air on, you know, you have the window open. But at night, I have one that's a calming blend, and then it's like to help you like relax enough to sleep so that you don't need like melatonin or anything like that. My husband even likes it. He's into it. So that's pretty, <laughs> but he burns candles in the garage too. Those so man sense. He likes, yeah. But we use ours all the time. I have one in the living room and one in the bedroom. And this smells good this whole time. Mm -hmm. uh, I've felt, I mean, honestly, like I, it's, it's four o'clock in the afternoon here in Ohio. And you guys know from working years or raising your kids, that's the time of the day where you start to kind of run out of energy a little bit. And so having this kind of is like a good thing, you know, if you're, yeah. if you're needing an energy boost. Kayla, I'm also wondering if you've ever, um, at a greenhouse, I, this past summer, they have citronella plants. Have you ever seen a citronella plant? I think I've seen them. I have, yeah. I do not have any, no. I wonder if that might help, like, if you, at your house, maybe, even if you, like, put some on, like, if you have a deck or anything, because I know I live in the city, and the mosquitoes at my house are horrendous. Um, I don't have citronella plants, but I've seen them, and they really do yeah. smell like a citronella candle, so maybe I that, do you? Yeah, mm -hmm. see, maybe that could be something that would help deter the mosquitoes, because it's hard to enjoy being outside if you're getting eaten alive. <laughs> I know, my legs, they're horrible. <laughs> Yeah. Like last weekend, uh, I did not like it was so hot, and I was gonna wear shorts. And I put them on, and I was like, my legs look like I have some sort of like 
problem or like disease because they are so bad. And I get like huge whelps too yep. from them. Like I have one on the back of my arm right now. Um, we went kayaking Friday night and we were out past dark. Um, and so the mosquitoes were just terrible. So I feel it. Yeah. So that's awesome though, that you had the good experience mm -hmm. with the essential oils. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys for putting this on. It was uh, very educational for, for me at least. Too. Um, I think other people got something out of it too. So I appreciate you girls spending the uh, afternoon with us and um, I will talk to you guys later. All right. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Have a good afternoon.